In this tutorial, I'm going to introduce some new conveyor version 2 techniques for sending Rhino objects into Revit. And in this particular example, I'm going to be using conveyor in conjunction with the Rhino Inside technology that was introduced in Rhino 7. Um, effectively, what Rhino Inside allows um, developers to do is execute Rhino as a plugin to other applications. And what Neil has done is they've introduced a tool called Rhino Inside Revit. And what this tool does is it allows you to launch Rhino um, inside of the Revit context. So developers um, and designers can build all sorts of novel integrations. So if you go to the add-ins tab, when you have Rhino Inside Revit installed, you'll see that there's a Rhino 7 button. And when that's activated, it will load the Rhinoceros tab. And here you'll see that you have a, a number of different interfaces you can use, um, including opening a Rhino window, um, as well as the Grasshopper interface. Now, the Rhino Inside plugin has a number of example integrations using Grasshopper. Um, what we've done with Conveyor is that we've introduced a new and very simple interface for interacting with Rhino models directly. And then using um, our Conveyor plugin, we're able to send Rhino objects into the Revit environment using just a few clicks of a button. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to open up a model uh, that I've prepared that has a number of different geometry types in. So I'm going to go ahead and open and I'm going to navigate to this workshop tower. And what you're going to see is that uh, we have a number of geometries defined uh, to kind of represent a tower concept. So there are things like floors and this facade. There's uh, kind of level markers indicated by text objects. There's some mesh geometry. And, you know, uh, in a design process, this is, you know, this might be what you start with. You might find yourself in Rhino um, sketching up some concepts um, using kind uh, of the direct modeling techniques that are available here. And you might then need to get to a point where, okay, I need to now migrate this information over into Revit for um, further development uh, within the building information modeling environment. So this can be uh, uh, a, a pretty cumbersome process if you if you um, are using a lot of the out of the box tools, and our hope is with Conveyor um, we can really streamline this to some really simple and direct integrations, um, which I'll be demonstrating here. So just to maybe clean up my workspace a little bit, I'm going to tab this over to the side so I have a nice kind of parallel set. You can kind of see that I've got my Revit model here, my Rhino model here, and what the first thing I'm going to do inside of Rhino is on the command line I'm going to type in Conveyor V2. And what this is going to do is it's going to activate a command um, that will launch the conveyor uh, interface. Um, and the conveyor interface uh, simply allows me to uh, control um, the direction of information. Um, it allows me to kind of assign some meaning to Rhino objects, and then it also allows me to send objects over. Um, so when I have Rhino launched through the Rhino Inside environment, um, you'll see that there is a expander here, um, and you'll see that it says Rhino Revit Direct. So I'm going to go ahead and expand that down. And this is going to expose two buttons. Uh, one is Get from Revit, and one is Send to Revit. Um, in this particular example, I'll be primarily using Send to Revit. Um, I'll have another tutorial up for getting objects from Revit. Um, but in this case, um, now that I have my conveyor interface set up, I'm going to go through an exercise of starting to send some of these object types over. Um, and so the first thing I want to do is I want to get some level datums inside of the uh, Revit environment. So what you'll see is I have a number of these um, text markers in Rhino that indicate a level name. And you can see I'm calling it Rhino 11 level 27B, for, for example. Um, so what I want to do is I want to send these over into the Revit environment and have Revit natively create some levels that I can start to work with. So I've got a couple levels over here, a couple levels over here. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit send to Revit. And what this is going to do is it's going to um, give me some information here that, uh, oh, there's 36 objects. Uh, these have not been properly classified um, as Revit compatible object. So um, you'll notice that up in the top part here, uh, there is a category tab. And right now these objects, you know, they're just text objects in Rhino. 
Um, so I need to tell Revit somehow uh, what these objects are going to be. So I'm going to go ahead and drop down and you'll see that there's two options for these. I can translate these uh, text objects as levels or as rooms. In this case, levels uh, makes the most sense because they're representing kind of elevational uh, information. Um, and that's what they're intended to be, are levels. So I'm going to go ahead and now hit send to Revit now that those objects are classified. Um, and so it's going through a process now of creating those level objects here. And when those level objects are created, if I go in and inspect Revit, they are indeed native level elements. Um, I can click them, um, see their properties, uh, and and do all, all sorts of things. It's as if I were to have drawn these manually, uh, but instead of drawing them, um, I'm simply creating this integration with Conveyor to uh, translate the, the the information from Rhino over over into this environment. Um, the next set of objects I need to bring over are going to be these uh, surfaces, um, which are representative of floors. You can see that they're two-dimensional um, trim surfaces. They have some trimming information on the perimeter as well as this um, trimming information on the interior, representing openings and holes where I have those cores passing through, and um, what I want to do is select all of those floors and generate native floor objects. And one way I can do to help me with this is I'm going to go ahead and um, open my layer tab here. And what you'll see uh, with this particular file is I have a couple of, of layers here, much like you would use in a typical um, Rhino workflow. You might kind of break your design up into these um, different categories of objects to help you uh, structure your information a bit. Um, you can see I've got this floor level here. I'm going to go ahead and select those objects. And now that I have those objects selected, I need to uh, not forget to categorize them. Um, so I want to make sure that these are going to be generated as floors. Um, and then you can see that I have a number of different floor types available. Um, uh, here, uh, including generic 12 inch and a number of other uh, types. So I'm just going to use generic 12 inch for right now. And I'm going to go ahead and send those over to Revit. And what this is going to do is it's going to um, begin generating um, these floor slabs. And you'll see that what's happening here is it's going through and you know, iterating through my selection of uh, different Rhino objects and it is uh, generating native Revit floors. And when I say native Revit floors, if I you know click in here, you can see that um, I can click on this object, and it has a you know a floor and a type, um, and I can go in and you know alter the type of floor if I want to. Um, if I double click on the object, um, you'll see that it has a uh, boundary condition uh, that is uh, editable, um, and uh, it's, also, it's also got one of those interior uh, boundaries as well. Um, that I can uh, choose to edit. And uh, yeah, it's as if I had modeled these, but instead of modeling them, I'm using this direct integration via conveyor. Um, another uh, type of information that you might want to uh, bring over into the uh, Revit environment from a file like this might be the, the structure. So if I, I can see here that I have this uh, series of columns um, and I'll kind of activate my layers again and maybe select my, my structure here. And just for the purposes of visual, I'll kind of isolate this. And you'll see that I have a number of different elements that are representative of kind of um, you know, slanted columns, trusses, um, and things like that. And in this case, uh, I'm going to assign these to kind of a component category. And I'm going to go ahead and make these columns. So it's going to kind of get classified as a, as a column element inside of the uh, a Revit environment. Um, and you'll see that there's a, there's a couple of options here that I can kind of choose from. Um, there, there is this checkbox called family creation. And there's a, a kind of a key um, thing about this. You know, if you use the components category, um, Conveyor has two modes. It can either choose to generate native uh, families um, so it would go through and iterate through all of these columns and create a, a family for each um, within the Revit environment. Um, and that has some advantages in terms of like materiality and, and other 
considerations. Um, but it's can be quite slow um, depending on what type of objects you're you're sending over. Um, if I have this unchecked, what this is going to do is it's going to translate them as direct shapes, um, which are less flexible when you go into Revit, uh, but they can generate pretty quickly. So if you need to get quick geometry into your uh, modeling environment and into the Revit environment, uh, that might be a, a, an ideal approach. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and click Send to Revit. And what it's going to do, similar to floors, um, it's going to translate the different objects um, into the uh, Revit environment um, and ensure their kind of classification. Um, and you can start to see now that there is a, a build in progress. You can see that those geometries are uh, being created um, in the Revit environment now uh, using the solid information from Rhino. And so um, this type of workflow applies to many, many different types of, of elements. We can do um, you know, component families. We can do floors, as I showed. Um, we can do meshes um, and, and other types of objects and have them classified. Um, so if I, for example, you'll see that we have, uh, now that our columns are in there, maybe I want to also bring over something like this um, mesh object that's representing kind of a landscape design. Now. When it comes to meshes, the conventional out-of-the-box workflows for importing meshes into Revit leaves a lot to be desired. You, you end up with a lot of mesh wires um, visible in Revit. Um, they don't look very good on a documentation sheet. They can be uh, very distracting. They may be good for sort of general coordination, but um, we wanted to introduce some, some novel techniques with Conveyor as well that handle mesh objects uh, a little bit more um, uh, fluidly uh, between these programs so they can actually become useful uh, parts of a, of a documentation set. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and click on this mesh that has you know, a number of different uh, faces and vertices. Um, I'm going to go ahead and say I want this a mesh and I want this classified as a site object. And when I have that classified as a site, it's going to generate um, a mesh, place it in in place and um, it will be classified as a site. So I'm going to go ahead and hit send to Revit. And what this is going to do is um, go through the process of translating that, that mesh. Um, meshes tend to generate pretty quickly. Um, I've generated meshes up to uh, 5 million faces using this workflow. Obviously a 5 million face mesh is, is, is a much heftier lift for a conveyor, um, but it, it is quite flexible and versatile. So here you can see I've got a surface in there. I'm in hidden line mode, so you can't really see um, all of the kind of geometry, but you can see that there is some, some facet faceting happening there. Um, and normally if I were to bring in this mesh, you'd see every single mesh wire, but in this particular workflow, it is hiding those mesh edges, which can make it um, pretty useful now to have um, in a site view or, or other view. If I go to shaded mode, we can see that it is indeed a mesh. So if I zoom in, um, you can see that I've got that, those mesh faces are there, but because of conveyors novel mesh processing, it is uh, hiding the, um, the edges uh, where, uh, where desired. Um, so we, we now have some, some object in there that we can use. Um, another thing I wanted to point out in this tutorial was that um, when we bring in these objects, um, these objects do carry with them some Rhino information when they're brought over, which makes it really useful to track what objects came from where. So when an object is pulled in, uh, for example, this floor, you can see that it has some information assigned. It's got this path, so it tells me which Rhino file it came from. Um, it's got this last updated uh, note, so this is the time it was imported. It's also got this Rhino layer um, indicator showing me what layer that object came from. We also have some identifying information. If I scroll down here, we can see that this is the Rhino object ID. So if I ever wanted to kind of trace the lineage of this object back to Rhino, um, I can do so. Um, these objects, uh, these, these properties are shared parameters, which means that they're schedulable. So if, for example, I wanted to make a schedule that showed all of my um, imported Rhino objects uh, that use conveyor, um, it makes it really easy to find. So what I'm going to do is start a multi-category schedule. I'm going to hit OK. 
And um, you'll see that I have these schedule properties here that I can use. Um, so I might say, okay, well, show me family and type. Um, let's get the, um, the path to the Rhino file that this came from. Let's get the object ID for that Rhino file, the layer and the uh, last updated. So this is gonna create an itemized list and maybe I'll do some sorting and grouping. I'm gonna maybe sort by um, you know, family and type just so there's a little bit more organization there. I'm gonna go ahead, okay. So this has now created a schedule of all of my, um, my objects here. And you can see that I've got my Rhino path, object ID, and so on um, now listed out. Um, and because I used a, um, I guess because I used a, uh, yeah, there we go. So there's the site uh, that actually has a family and type assigned to it. These are floors um, here. So those aren't um, uh, being listed as family and type. But now I have this um, schedule that allows me to kind of do some coordination on the interoperability workflow um, and, and really track these objects from their origin uh, into the building information modeling environment. So hopefully this provides a useful overview on how um, users can use Conveyor V2 um, in combination with Rhino Inside to perform these direct model translations and uh, have a far more streamlined workflow uh, for uh, direct integration. Um, and you can see that within Rhino, I only needed to know how to select an object, classify it, and send it on over.